Get me that signal. We need more power. Welcome to the voice of E. I am your host, Sir Elliot of Castle Ferrocia. You might remember me from my books, Squires, A Care and Feeding Guide, or The Importance of Removing Your Armor Quickly After Feasting at the White Castle. Today, I will be discussing the game Ivanhoe from GMT Games, which was designed by Rainer Knizia. Ivanhoe, if you recall, is the marvellous story written by Sir Walter Scott in 1820 concerning the doings of Wilfred of Ivanhoe, the beautiful Lady Rowena, the Black Knight, also known as King Richard, Prince John, oh, sorry, spoiler alert, Prince John and one Robin Hood. The novel is set in the 12th century England and is frequently credited with igniting interest in medieval Europe and providing much of our modern-day myths surrounding Robin Hood. The game expresses this theme by being named Ivanhoe. I'm kidding, of course. The theme isn't that pasted on. <laughs> Each player is a participant in a medieval tournament and must win five events in order to be declared the winner. Four will not win you the game, and six is right out. After you win the fourth tournament, you must immediately proceed to the fifth tournament, which you will need to win in order to be declared the winner. Each tournament will be either jousting, a fight with swords, axes, morning stars, or a simple melee. The first player to win one of each of these wins the game. Why don't I tell you what the back of the box says? Well, you take on the role of a knight and join the prestigious tournaments at the king's court. Use your cards to win the jousting competitions, or fight with your sword, your axe, or your morning star. I feel like a morning star. Rally your squires, gain the support of a maiden, and play action cards against your opponents. Filthy opponents. The first player to win four or five different tournaments becomes the overall victor. This, of course, depends on the number of players. The game consists of many consecutive tournaments. The player who starts the tournament determines which weapon will be used in it. A tournament may start as jousting, as a fight with swords, axes, or morning stars, which I will only say 17 more times or as a fight without weapons, which of course we call a melee. Usually a tournament is fought with the same weapon throughout. However, some action cards allow the players to change the current tournament weapon. A player who wins a tournament receives one token of the final color in which the tournament was fought. However, a player who wins a jousting tournament may take any color token due to the prestige of the jousting tournament. Let the tournaments begin! That's from the back of the box. Why don't we take a closer look? Ivanhoe, the game, comes with a deck of 110 cards and 25 tokens, which are the mini poker chip type and come in five colors representing the five different kinds of tournaments. The bulk of the cards are color cards with different values on them. They represent the different types of tournaments and the amount of points you gain by playing them. 
Each round is considered a tournament, and the last player standing at the end of the round wins the tournament and gains a token of the color of the type the tournament is in. However, if it's a jousting tournament, they can either choose the purple or they can choose one of any color, so it's, since it's so prestigious to win a jousting tournament. The winner of the tournament determines the color of the next tournament and gets to play first. In a nutshell, each player is trying to beat the total of the player before him by playing cards of the color that, of the tournament that you're in. If, and I'll show you in a minute. If you can't beat the previous player, you have to withdraw. The last player standing wins that round. It's actually fairly simple. You'll see what I mean in a second. But there are a few other card types in the deck. You also have white supporter cards that have a value of two or three squiles. These are squiles. That can be played on any color. You can play a white maiden card that has a value of six. But if you lose the tournament that you played her in, you will also lose a chip if you have one. And the last type of card are the action cards. And these all have various effects that can change the course of a tournament. Some are definitely more useful than others. And since you can hold as many cards in your hand as you like, you never have to discard them until you actually play them. Some of the cards can change the color of a tournament. Some can force the players to discard cards that they've already played. And some will force everyone to discard cards, among other things. There are two special action cards, and one is the shield, which protects you from other action cards. And the other is stunned which you can play on someone else so that they can only play one card per turn. Ivanhoe is a card which can be used to cancel any other action card. Now one note on a green tournament. This is the melee tournament and all of the cards have a value of one regardless of what is printed on the card. So you might not want to waste all of your high value supporter cards on a green tournament. Yeah. high value. Now let's bring all this together by playing a quick round. So, here we go. Randomly, this is player one. and He's got his cards. That's the first hand of the game. Actually, you're going to pull some, there's some rules for getting. Here's the rules, by the way. They are black and white, but they actually are fairly simple. They've got explanations on all the special cards. And there's some diagrams, and on the back it tells you the card distribution for your calculation enjoyment. So they're actually not too bad. Uh, let's see, this player, since he gets to pick the color of the tournament, and he's got a lot of yellow going on here, he's going to start out playing this yellow 2, right? So he plays a yellow 2 in front of him, and he announces 2. So we suddenly have a yellow tournament going on here. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. So the next player picks up his cards and looks. Okay, he does not. Uh, first off, he gets to draw a card. I missed that crucial step. You always get to draw a card first. And then he looks through his hand. He can change the tournament color from red, green, or yellow, red, blue, or yellow to green if he wants. He doesn't have any green cards either. All he has is a supporter card, which would give him three if he played it. Because you can play white on anything. But other than that, no yellow. So he says, I'm dropping from this tournament. And so that means that player three is up. He draws his card. And he looks through his cards. Holy cow, he doesn't have any yellow either. You, but he does have this. You may draw at random one card from any one opponent's hand and add it to your own hand without revealing the card. How's that going to help? Nobody knows. He doesn't have yellow. So he just withdraws as well. And this lucky first player, hey, he's just won this tournament with one card. And he takes a yellow chip. 
And what does this mean? This means he gets to start, since he won that round, he gets to start again. Well, he's already got a yellow chip now. So what is he going to do? What is he going to do? First, he's going to draw a card because he forgot about that. And then, ooh, he's going for a red tournament this time. He's going for, he's playing a red three. Well, now this player says, hoo, 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 ha, 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 he, he, he. I am going to play a red four. And he announces four. Now, four is higher than three. So he is now still in the money. I hope I remember to draw his card. We go to player three, draw his card, and he has a red three. Okay, let's say he's going to say red three and my squire. That gives me six. So I've got a six now. So I am now winning. So now it's black. Back to the first player. He picks up a card. Oh, it's another red card. What he's going to, okay. He's got that. He's just tied now, though, with six. So he needs to go higher than that. So luckily he's got this red five. He's going to play that too. You can play as many cards as you want on your one hand. So that gives him six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He announces, I've got eleven. <laughs> and it goes on to the next player. He draws his card. He's got a four sitting there. He plays his five, that gives him nine. He plays that, 10, 11, 12, 13. He's now got 13 on the board and he's got still in his hand this red four and his squire for three points to use if he wants. So he laughs, <laughs> and the 13 goes to the next player who draws a card. Okay, he's got six sitting out there. He could go up to nine with this one but that really isn't going to help him at all so he is stuck so he says i withdraw and his cards get discarded and it goes to back to player one okay he's got to beat 14 so he's got 11 oh, he gets to draw a card retreat hmm but he does have this card which says you may take the last card of any one opponent's display and add it to your own display. <laughs> so he plays that card, which gets discarded, and takes this four sitting on top, adds it to his own, giving him 9, 10, 12, 15, versus this player's 9. And laughing, he sits back while the other player pulls up his cards again. Hmm, and he draws his card. And he says, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. He's got two red cards. 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17. Beat that, you fool. And he sets his cards down. Well, player one goes back. He's looking at his cards. Six, ten, fifteen. He's got to beat seventeen. He draws his card. Okay. That gives him eighteen. Ha! He says, I will crush you like a grape. Hmm. Hmm. That's not going to help him discarding all the highest value cards into displays. That would be the fives, and they would both lose the same amount. But he does have this, which gives him 20. So, he's got 20 versus 18. Back to player one. All player one has left is this one supporter card. This gives him 21. 21 and a ton of cards writing on this. He's only got this many cards left in his hand. And you don't replenish your hand between rounds. No, 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 sir. So, player one. 
He's player two is sweating here. He pulls up his card. Yes! 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 He pulls out a white supporter card. Throws it down. We got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 23. You are going down. Player 1 pulls the card. He's sweating his butt off. No! Nothing. Nothing helps him. And with a heavy heart, he decides to withdraw. Sigh. He loses. Those are discarded. Those are discarded. And player two gets the valuable red token. And gets to choose the color of the next round. And that is how you play Ivanhoe. When I first read the rules, I had no idea what was going on. I had to actually start playing the game to figure things out, and once I did, it was a piece of cake, as you would say. This is not a bad game. There are some interesting strategic possibilities presented, and you really need to plan out the right time to strike, and when to give up and not waste all of your cards on a losing proposition. In a two- or three-player game, a player wins by collecting a token of each of the five colors. In a four- or five-player game, you win by getting four different color tokens. Here's a couple of hints for the game. It is perfectly permissible to withdraw from a round without playing a single card. You don't want to throw away cards in a round that you know you won't be able to win. Also, sometimes it is just as important to stop another player from winning a round, even if you already have that color chip. You don't get another chip, but you do stop someone else from getting it. The one thing that did bug me is the poker chips. It kills the theme for me a bit. I mean, when I see a game with poker chips, I think of poker. I'm not sure what else they could have used, though. I would have preferred gold coins, but hey, that's me. Overall, Ivanhoe is an entertaining card game. I hadn't heard of it before, but it has been around for a few years. If you like card games and are into the whole medieval tournament thing, you'll probably have a good time playing Ivanhoe. Thanks for joining me in this review of Ivanhoe from GMT Games. Let me know if you found this review helpful by leaving a comment or sending me an email at Elliot underscore Miller at voiceofe.com. Make sure to subscribe to the Voice of E channel on YouTube, as I'll have plenty of gaming, entertainment, and comic book coverage this year. And it should be a lot of fun. Thanks again, and until next time, keep your mind free. Get me that signal. We need more power.